Hello everyone, today I'm going to talk about Pulsar based space navigation which is currently being tested in connection with the uh, NISO instrument on the International Space Station. But first I would like to uh, make an announcement uh, tomorrow or uh, as this video uploads in about 12 hours or so, uh, depending on how fast it uploads, a Soyuz will launch the uh, Soyuz MS-05 capsule with uh, ISS Expedition 52. Of course, as it is a human carrying flight, I am extra excited for this and I will live stream the launch. One of the astronauts is an ESA astronaut and you can watch more about him and his mission on ESA's channel. Now to the topic, which is uh, pulsar-based space navigation. Uh, first of all, pulsars are very dense spinning stars with a uh, rotational period of, uh, depending on the type of pulsar, between uh, 1 and 10 seconds, or uh, some pulsars uh, rotate much faster at a uh, few millisecond pulses. And uh, what's what gives them their name is that they uh, seem to pulse, that is because their uh, properties, their, their uh, magnetic field is uh, not aligned with their rotational axis, so the uh, rotational field as such actually uh, spins, and if you measure uh, the radiation coming from these stars, you can uh, notice them pulsing as the uh, axis of the magnetic field essentially points uh, closer to the observer or further away from the observer very quickly. Now I might talk further about the uh, astronomy and astrophysics behind uh, how pulsars work and uh, how they come to be, if you're interested, but uh, for now uh, this is all we need for the uh, applicational part, for the navigation part. What this gives us is essentially a uh, timer in outer space. And the way pulsar navigation works is that you uh, have, of course, a, a data bank or some sort of file on your spacecraft where you have uh, information about different pulsars and an instrument to actually observe them. And then you can use them as timers and the actual navigation technique works basically like uh, GPS or other navigational satellites. You have uh, several sources that give you a uh, relatively precise timing output and these sources are different locations and different directions and the timing output from these sources is transmitted to you at the speed of light and depending on your position, the, this speed of light uh, adds a different amount of lag depending on how far away you are from that source. And so if you have uh, several sources, if you have uh, four or more sources for more precision, or three or more sources and a precise timer of your own, you can triangulate your position and the actual current time. Now GPS satellites or other navigation satellites of course have a lot of advantages of their own, that's why we use them. They give a very precise timing pulse, of course the precision of timing uh, in a pulsar depends on what kind of pulsar you're observing and what kind of instrument you're using and how well you can analyze that data. But GPS satellites can very easily give you an exact nanosecond uh, time stamp. They just send the information right to you and uh, it's precise to the nanosecond, whereas in a pulsar you have a millisecond kind of precision and then with further data analysis you might get a better precision, but it's at least at uh, this state of technology much less precise. Also, of course, uh, navigational satellites are designed to have signals that are very easy to recognize and very easy to pick up. And at least for use on Earth, the instruments to pick up navigational satellites are much uh, simpler. But pulsars also have a lot of advantages, which is why they're being uh, researched right now and why uh, 
the navigation technique is being tested right now. Now there are of course a few uh, hypothetical military advantages, like uh, obviously uh, you don't have to worry that a pulsar will be uh, taken out by an anti-satellite missile anytime soon, but uh, much more interestingly, at least uh, I think it's much more interesting, uh, is the application for deep space travel and uh, deep space navigation. To start with, the obvious navigation satellites are of course designed to be easily received on Earth. They are essentially pointed towards Earth. Of course, there are different very complicated antenna designs that are made to cover different parts of the Earth, but generally they are pointed towards Earth. Their signal is only that strong and uh, you would need quite a bit of instruments to pick up a satellite from uh, far away in deep space when that satellite isn't even really transmitting into space but pointed towards Earth and you're only picking up tiny bits of uh, escaping signal. Now of course there are ground stations and satellites available for space navigation as well that uh, will send to a uh, spacecraft when needed. But there are a few more problems with uh, using satellites for space navigation. One of them uh, simply being geometry and uh, distance. Most navigational satellites are in Earth orbit, in uh, geostationary orbit to be precise. And the precision of uh, triangulation is uh, dependent on several things. It doesn't only depend on how precise you can uh, tell the distance to a satellite. Of course, using a uh, precise timer and uh, using a signal coming from Earth, you will always be able to tell your distance from Earth very precisely, or your distance from an Earth-orbiting satellite very precisely. But to also tell your uh, direction from Earth, you will uh, need to uh, tell the difference in distance from different Earth-based satellites and uh, according to the laws of trigonometry and geometry. This will get less precise the further away you are relative to the distance between these satellites. So, uh, for example, as these uh, satellites are only in geostationary orbit, if you are uh, much further away than the Moon's orbit, your uh, positioning in terms of direction from Earth becomes uh, much less precise. As uh, You can imagine it like two levers, essentially, if you your information on the different distances from the different satellites is a little bit imprecise that uh, leads to a much bigger imprecision in your information in terms of uh, direction relative to Earth. Of course, you can uh, fix that by using an additional navigation system, for example, by uh, using the stars to orientate yourself and then uh, looking at the Earth with an actual uh, telescope and seeing in which direction it is relative to you but that would require additional instruments. Of course, a small disadvantage that uh, pulsar navigation has is that it essentially needs to be calibrated. As pulsars don't give a complete timestamp, but only a periodic pattern that can be used to derive the uh, timing, so essentially if you are a lot closer or a lot further away from the pulsar than you think you are, you might uh, get a wrong distance since you can measure the point within a period but not uh, which exact period you are in. Of course uh, different pulsars can uh, be used to find that out or uh, more precise measurements and more knowledge about that specific pulsar. And of course, a uh, less precise navigational method could be used to uh, calibrate this so you know at least roughly uh, which period you are actually in. So we can then measure uh, where within that period you are. 
so you might need uh, more than four pulsars to uh, reliably navigate. Of course this is less of a problem if your navigation is uh, running continuously so you uh, basically have your navigation system running from the moment you launch from Earth to the end of mission then you uh, can always count through the period but if you have a spacecraft hibernate for example and then turn off and off the navigation system and turn it on a lot later you might no longer exactly know which period of a uh, pulsar's signal you are in right now for now pulsar based navigation is in a research and experimental phase there are two main notable projects on this one is the uh, sextant project of nasa which is currently being tested on the uh, ISS in uh, connection with the NISO instrument and the other being the XPNAV experimental satellite launched by China. Currently the precision of pulsar based navigation is within uh, several kilometers of range which is actually not that bad for real deep space navigation but of course it can't compete with uh, on earth GPS and it's not really precise enough for every maneuver you shouldn't uh, land with an altimeter that is imprecise by several kilometers but it's still in development it's still in research and depending on uh, how well you analyze the signals coming from pulsars it might still improve a lot So for now this was my uh, introduction to uh, pulsar based navigation. I hope you found this kind of interesting. I'm always open for uh, questions and uh, thanks for watching.